from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering GitLab Commit 2020. Brought to you by GitLab. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE's coverage of GitLab Commit 2020 here in San Francisco. You might notice some of our guests have some jackets on. It is a little cooler than normal here in San Francisco, but the community and knowledge is keeping us all warm. Nice. Joining us for the first time on the program is Nicholas Click, who's an engineering manager uh, at GitLab. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. All right, so you had an interesting topic. The state of serverless in 2020 mm -hmm. was the session that you gave. Uh, definitely a topic we've loved covering on theCUBE, something I personally have been digging into, trying to understand. Uh, definitely something that uh, the developers and especially the app devs that I speak with are, are very bullish on. So what is the state of serverless in 2020? That's actually a good, a good question. Um, so my, my talk was actually broken into two parts. One was, like initially I just wanted to help provide a clear definition of what serverless is. Uh, in, in my opinion, serverless is more than just functions. There are a lot of other, um, a, a lot of other technologies like backend as a service, API gateways, um, service integration proxies that you can stitch together to create dynamic applications. Um, so, you know, I just I ex created a more expanded definition of what serverless is from my perspective. And the other part was to really talk about three things that I'm finding exciting right now in the serverless space. Um, the first was K-Native, and the fact that K-Native is likely going to um, go to GA pretty soon, so it'll be production ready, and um, we can finally, you know, build, like, production workloads on it. Um, the second is that um, is the, the uh, running serverless at the edge I find to be an exciting topic. And then finally, um, talking more in depth on those uh, the service integrations um, of how you can actually create applications that don't include functions at all. Um, so functionless serverless. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of things I definitely want to tease out of that. Okay. But Nicholas, I guess maybe we should step back a second. Okay. And, uh, was there survey work or was there something done or is this kind of uh, something related to your job that you put together uh, as just uh, an important topic? Yeah, I know this is just uh, me speaking as someone that, you know, works in the space and, you know, uh, you know, sees the technologies evolve in and just my opinions, I guess. Okay. Um, when, when I talk to the practitioners, when you go and say, oh, they're interested in it, Chances are they're doing stuff on Amazon is like what, what kind of the first piece of it tends to be. Um, there are lots of open source projects out there, mm -hmm. but it still is kind of dominated by, uh, you know, Amazon. Azure has some pieces. Of course, Google uh, mm -hmm. has things they're doing. Um, I, I liked how you teased out that, you know, serverless definitely isn't a thing and the definition and even the term itself gets people all riled up mm -hmm. uh, and things like that. Um, you know, so I, I, I hate getting into the ontological arguments, but the promise of it is that you know, I can build applications in a different way and I shouldn't have to think about some of the underlying components, hence the name serverless kind of you know, right. it does that. Um, but it, it definitely is a, a, a change in mindset as to how I build and consume uh, environments. Right, right. And, and, and like another point that I, uh, that I made in the talk that, that I believe pretty strongly is that serverless is not something that's gonna replace monoliths and microservices. Uh, I believe it's another tool in the tool belt of the developer, of the operator, um, to solve problems. And that we should look at it like that. It shouldn't be, uh, it's not, the like next progression in application architecture. Yeah, uh, I've met some companies that are 100%. They built everything on serverless, mm -hmm. but you know that that that's like saying I I've, I've met plenty of companies that are all in the cloud. It depends mm -hmm. on what you do and what your business is. Right. When we look at the enterprise, uh, it is a broad spectrum and making changes along uh, that, that path is something that typically takes a decade or more. Uh, and they have hundreds if not thousands of applications and therefore, mm -hmm. we understand, I've got my stuff running on my mainframe through my latest microservice architecture uh, and everything in between. Right, and, and I mean, I'm speaking as, as, a, as a, you know, an employee at GitLab and we have, you know, um, a very well-known monolith that we deploy and, um, 
So from, from my, my opinion, I don't believe that monoliths are going to die anytime soon. All right. Um, I'd love you to tease out some of those pieces uh, that, that, that you talked about, the, the three items. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, you talked about K-Native. Um, you know, K-Native is interesting. Uh, the thing I poked at when I go to uh, KubeCon and CloudNativeCon is Today, I mentioned when I think about customers, most of them are using Amazon. The second choice is they're right. probably doing Azure. And today, Knative directly doesn't work with you know, EKS, AKS, uh, or, or the like. Um, I, I know there, there's a solution like Trigger Mesh that actually mm -hmm. will interact right. um, a bit between the Amazon and there, but I mean, don't you need the buy-in of you know, Amazon and Microsoft for Knative to be taken seriously? And the other thing is Google still hasn't opened up the, uh, right. the, 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 the Google controls the governance uh, of both Istio and Knative, and there are some concerns in the ecosystem about that. So uh, what, 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 what makes you so bullish on, on Knative? Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I'm definitely aware of some of the, uh, the discussions around, um, around Knative. Uh, from from my perspective, I think that Knative is um, you know if if someone is already operating a lot of Kubernetes infrastructure, um, if they already you know have those um, that infrastructure running, then deploying Knative to it um, is not that much more of a um, it's, you know it doesn't require additional resources and expense, so it, it could be again it depends on their use case, and I think that when I think about Serverless, I try to remain pragmatic. So if I'm already using Kubernetes uh, and I want a simple you know, serverless uh, runtime, uh, Knative would be a great option in that um, situation. If I want to be able to um, uh, you know, um, work uh, like cross-cloud, like this is another um, uh, opportunity that Knative provides is the ability of like deploying to any Kubernetes um, cluster anywhere. Um, so it, it, it has that, you know, that um, there's, there's not a vendor lock-in issue with, with Knative. Yeah, and a absolutely there was initially some concern that could serverless actually be the ultimate lock-in. Right. Uh, I'm going to go deep on one provider and don't have a way. There's, uh, you know, open source groups like the CNCF trying to help along those sure. ways. Knative absolutely along those ways, the, the, that looking at that environment. Um, fr from a GitLab customer standpoint, uh, you know, GitLab's not tied to whether you're doing, you know, containers or serverless right. or VMs uh, or in the environment. What, what, what does it What does it mean for GitLab customers? Um, you know, if I want to look at serverless, how does that fit into my overall workflow? Yeah. So, so, so initially, um, initially at GitLab, we focused on uh, on providing. Uh, the ability to deploy to Knative. That was uh, we were very early in um, in the Knative space, and I think that as as it's matured, as those APIs have matured, then our our product has kind of developed. Um, and so right now, we enable you to be able to um, to create uh, Kubernetes clusters through our interface, and then deploy your your function runtimes uh, directly from um, your GitLab repo. Uh, we've also are kind of growing in our um, our like examples and documentation of how to integrate uh, GitLab CI/CD with Lambda. Um, that's another big area that we're we're moving into as well. Great. Uh as you look forward to 2020, we've got a whole new decade in front of us. Mm -hmm. uh, what 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 should what do you think people should be watching on in the maturity of this space? Yeah. So so I think that the the point that I touched on earlier of the service integrations. I think that that is something you're going to see more and more of, of um, the providers themselves linking together their different services and enabling you to create these like dynamic applications without a lot of um, glue that you have to you know manually create in between. Um, I think that we're going to see uh, you know fr like more open source frameworks like for example Service Framework or Terraform um, that. You know, people people want the. I mean, I, I know that a lot of people use, for example, AWS SAM. Um, people want easier ways and faster ways to be able to deploy their serverless. So you have the you know bootstrapping of serverless. Um, I guess another thing that I expect is that the serverless 
um, the, the serverless development um, lifecycle will mature in that whether going from bootstrapping, to testing, deployment, monitoring, security, I believe you're going to see companies that will start to really fill in that entire space the same way that they do for monoliths and microservices. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Nicholas. De definitely something we've been tracking uh, over the last year or so. Uh, you start to see many in the tool chain of cloud native environments digging into serverless, helping to mature those solutions, and definitely an area to watch closely. Great. All right. Uh, lots more coverage. Check out thecube.net for all the events that we will be at through 2020, as well as you can go back and see we've actually done Serverless Conf a couple of years, many of the other cloud and cloud native shows. Uh, search uh, in our index. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.